call the member for Broadwater. Thank you, Madam Acting Speaker. Madam Acting Speaker, the Queensland health crisis has been laid bare by the Auditor General's report. This is a damning report, a scathing report, which lays the Queensland health crisis firmly at the feet of this government. Over three terms, this is the government's health legacy, and it has cost Queenslanders greatly. Some have paid with their lives. What did it say about emergency departments? It said as a percentage of the entire patient population, their performance has been declining. From July 2020 to February 21, only one of the top 26 reporting hospitals met the targets for both ramping and time spent in emergency departments. What did it say about treating patients within clinically recommended times? Hospitals have not met targets for category two or three. Getting patients off stretches within clinically recommended times, what people in the real world call ambulance ramping. This target has not been met at a statewide level in the past seven years. The wait time between ambulance arrival and triage is not monitored. Performance of short-term treatment areas is not monitored or measured. The Queensland Ambulance Service only provides summary reports to key teams, quote, whoever they are. The people who need to know don't know. Queensland Health is flying blind and our population is worse for it. There was a digital project that the government started to try and fix the problem, but, and I quote, the project was put on hold as part of the Queensland government's debt saving plan. This government is more interested in looking good than performing well. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's not about how things look. It's the way things are. And right now, the way things are in the Queensland health system is scary. The clincher is the report found that data is being cleansed. The true state of our hospital is being hidden. And what does that mean? Well, the quote says, as a result, the performance reported to the Commonwealth and the community may not be accurate. Funding for ED may be at incorrect levels and demographic data used for planning may not accurately reflect each hospital's current needs. Do you want to know what that means? That means a failure to plan will cost people their lives. Page after page. This is scary for anyone who needs help in their hour of need. Page after page. This report is a horror story. I've read some reports from the Auditor General. Few have belled the cat as loudly as this one. And this government can blame all sorts of things. COVID, the Commonwealth, clinicians. But in the end, the report shows a culture of failure of what happens when you don't plan ahead. What does it mean for everyday Queenslanders? It means when your child has an asthma attack, the Queensland Government Health Service may not be there for you. It means when your dad has a heart attack, the Queensland Health Service may not be there for you. And it means when your grandmother has a fall, the Queensland Health Service may not be there for you. These are the consequences for actions when a government starts losing control of service delivery, when it puts image ahead of outcome. These are the consequences for everyday Queenslanders. This report puts it in black and white what many Queenslanders know. They are suffering under a sick system. Our town halls have shown right across the board stories from real Queenslanders who just wanted help when they needed it most. Catherine from Cleveland who told the shadow health minister her dad was terminally ill with leukaemia when he needed to have his cannula replaced. They waited 12 hours for treatment and left the hospital without receiving any. Anthony from Ipswich, his dad was taken to the Ipswich hospital after suffering several heart attacks. Neville spent more than 24 hours in ED before he was moved into a coronary ward. He passed away in hospital five days later. And then there was Steve, whose wife died in his arms waiting for an ambulance to arrive. And Madam Acting Speaker, I've said it time and time again, when we raise these issues, we are not criticising the frontline staff. 
The frontline staff are coming to us, asking us to raise these issues. They feel helpless, powerless, voiceless. They want a system to support them. They didn't sign up to be a paramedic to sit at the end of a ramp, knowing that at the end of a phone line, there is somebody waiting in their darkest hour and they just need help. They signed up because they are great Queenslanders looking to serve. People don't become doctors and nurses because they want to be part of some sort of system that lets down patients. They're great Queenslanders. They want service. They want to know that they're being supported. What are the solutions and recommendations? Improve how we record information on things like ambulance ramping. Be open, be transparent. Introduce real-time hospital data to drive cultural performance. Yep. Make sure that in real time people know what's happening. Improve triaging. And the Shadow Health Minister is going to explain, and I would urge those opposite to listen, what, what could happen if you in, again empower people at the front line to make decisions. Let's put more money into those health and hospital services. Let's make sure that the people at the front line are making decisions. Those clinical nurses, let them be in charge of triaging. Empower the HHSs. We saw a disgraceful, a disgraceful scene here a few months ago where the government was talking about how they were going to increase funding to the health service, but with the other hand they were taking it away from the front line, from the HHSs, the people who make the decisions. That's where more money needs to go. These solutions are solutions the LNP has put forward, but it hasn't come from us. They have been solutions given to us by the nurses, by the doctors, by the patients, by the ambos, and by whistleblowers. And we heard story after story about whistleblowers in Caboolture, and uh, I would urge those opposite to listen to the Shadow Health Minister about that. But I say to the government, swallow your pride for the sake of Queenslanders and for the sake of fixing a sick system. Be honest, be open, be transparent, share your data in real time. Madam Deputy Speaker, if you want an example of transparency, this report was tabled. This report was tabled minutes after the Premier faced a media conference. Again, again, every time we have one of these, it's a Friday afternoon or it's moments after the Premier stands up and faces a, middle co a media conference. Here's an idea. Front up and own the issue. If you own the issue, if you are prepared to stand up, if you are prepared to stand up and be accountable, that will drive cultural reform. Order members. If you are prepared to front up. Pause the clock. Pause the clock. Member for Nanango, member for Harvey Bay, member for Bundaberg, I'll ask that you quit quarrelling across the chamber. Thank you. Madam Deputy Speaker, it's one thing to be angry. It's another thing to drive change. It's another thing to show leadership. It's another thing to be prepared to make decisions and admit when you get it wrong and change your policy position accordingly. And no Queenslander can say that the Queensland health system is world class at present. And that's not the fault of the doctors. That's not the fault of the nurses. It's not the fault of the AMBOs. It is the fault of a government that is losing control. And in the same way that the government lost control towards the end of its tenure in 2011 when it was a basket case, history is repeating itself. And what I am finding increasingly, what I'm finding increasingly is the numbers, the numbers that at the time was driving the then Premier to describe Queensland Health as a basket case, those numbers are back. And they are worse. And that is a concern for every Queenslander. So today we must today we must grab this report, Madam Deputy Speaker. We must grab it and we must be prepared to learn from it. We must be prepared to empower the frontline staff, release data in real time, make sure that things like 
ambulance ramping is listed and reported on, that data is available in real time. Everyone everywhere in this state deserves a world-class health system, not a government that hides and dodges when critical services break down for Queenslanders. Yeah. Deputy Speaker.